Dear all, we will now discuss about a very important topic, transfusion of packed red cell in preterm babies. Here we will learn as to why should one follow standard guidelines to transfuse a baby rather than take decisions subjectively. Following this, we will also discuss in detail and understand the guidelines to be followed for transfusing packed red cell RBCs in preterm babies. And finally, we will also learn how is PRBC transfusion given with some important points. We all at some time or the other have transfused preterm babies with packed red cells. The decision to transfuse is generally taken on clinical assessment or interpretation of hemoglobin levels of the baby. These assessments may differ from person to person, resulting in wide variation in transfusion practices. Hence, if the guidelines are not used, one may tend to give transfusion when it is not required. These unrequired transfusions may put the preterm baby at undue risk of complications and these preterm babies are at higher risks for all complications compared to term babies. Hence, it is very important to always use standard guidelines for transfusing packed red cells in preterm babies. The slide now shows what guidelines we have to follow. The table in the slide describes the guidelines for transfusing the PRBC in preterm babies. The values in the table all depict hemoglobin levels in gram percentage. Now let us understand how one can follow these guidelines. To appropriately follow the guidelines, one needs to determine three important factors, namely age of the baby, gestation of the baby and requirement of oxygen or CPAP by the baby. For preterm babies who are more than 32 weeks of gestation, one has to follow the hemoglobin level cutoffs in the blue column that is on the left side. Example, if the baby is more than 32 weeks and is 16 days old, he should receive transfusion if the hemoglobin level is less than 7.5 gram percentage. Similarly, if a baby is 3 days old, his cutoff for transfusion would be hemoglobin of less than 10. For preterm babies less than 32 weeks of gestation, it is also important to determine if they are requiring the oxygen or CPAP. One can refer the left hand side of the table to determine the transfusion cutoffs. Example, if the baby is 12 hours old and his hemoglobin is 11 gram percentage, he will receive transfusion only if he is receiving oxygen or supported by CPAP, otherwise he will not receive transfusion. You can see that when the baby is on oxygen or CPAP, he is sick and hence he is, these babies have a higher cutoff compared to babies who are not on any kind of respiratory support. Hence, before taking a decision on transfusion in these at-risk babies, one should always refer the chart. The same has also been provided as an annexure for your reference. Now, once we have decided PRBC should be transfused based on the guidelines, some of the important considerations for the PRBC transfusions are, the volume of transfusion should be 15 ml and this should be given over 2 to 4 hours, preferably by an infusion pump and this should always be cross matched. Strict asepsy should be maintained while initiating and giving the transfusion. The baby may continue accepting feeds during transfusion unless the baby is hemodynamically unstable. It is generally advisable to stop the IV fluids while transfusing the PRBC unless the baby is being treated for hypoglycemia with IV fluids. In such a baby, a separate line for PRBC transfusion should be established. The furosemide should not be routinely used during transfusion. Thank you.